Welcome to Drag 101, it's episode 2, Contour and Highlight. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what you would use, which is creams. So cream contouring is what you do before powder contouring, I don't know if you might have seen both. So there's a few types of products you would use, but basically cream is a good one. You want like a thick cream to like carve out and draw or like paint on your face. So basically the theory is highlighting brings things forwards, contouring takes things back. So imagine, look at a face. Imagine things like my cheeks or my nose or my forehead or my chin. The highlights are the bits that come forward. You can see like, you see that? They are brighter because the light is hitting them first before it comes back here to hit these things. And these things are now darker because of the shadow cast by these things. What you will highlight is your cheeks, mainly the apples of your cheeks, the tip of and bridge of your nose, above your lips, the tip of your chin, your forehead, your brow bone, and maybe like your eyeballs. And then contouring is the complete opposite to that. You're contouring everyone was head off. So that is where you use a dark colour, like a shadow colour, to make things look like a shadow. This depends on your skin tone, what kind of tone you're going to use. If you're pale and white like me, you will want a brown colour that is cool. You want cool brown. So like almost a grey brown looks best if you're pale because then it won't look like you've just got orange on your face which I see a lot of people do because a lot of contour products are orange or something. So what you do is you will draw shadows on. If you have darker skin you will focus mainly on the highlights rather than the contour because it's easier to get lighter colours. Sometimes you might just be that darker, a dark colour won't show up or doesn't exist because they don't really make that many dark colours in this white central world. I prefer playing with highlights anyway because even if I'm pale like me, I can still play with a straight up white. Highlighting, I also feel like looks more natural than using dark to create structure. Using light can look more natural and it also makes the rest of the makeup kind of show up easier. So contour is used to make things look darker and therefore make them look back. People use this mostly on their cheekbones because then what you can do with this is it makes look, your cheeks look like hollow. You see like how my cheeks look like I've got brown stripes on my face. You draw that shadow on. Now, I personally don't like to do this much because I already have strong cheekbones. So I feel like if I was to over contour my cheekbones more, I would just look like really bony and it's actually kind of aging and emasculating. Is masculating the word? Masculinizing. We'll say masculinizing if we will. But it makes you look masculine, it makes you look older if you contour too much. I see a lot of people do it, they contour their cheeks and their temples, especially the temples, that just makes you look like a skull, it makes you look like a manly skull. I like to have a soft face, especially if we're doing things like facial feminization, we want to look softer. Yes, it's always nice to look fierce and have a fierce cheekbone, but you don't need that all the time, you don't need to look skinnier because skinnier doesn't always mean you look better. So don't focus on looking skinny, but focus on looking however you want to look which in my mind is more round and soft and plump. So say I focus a lot on highlighting my cheek rather than contouring it because I want my cheeks to look bright and full and that makes me look more feminine, especially from a distance. Obviously I will contour them a bit because I like to have this kind of supermodel bone structure, but I don't need to contour them that much and I see a lot of people go in their cheeks with almost straight up black and they don't really think about what they're doing. That's what you need to think about. Contouring is one of the most important parts of doing a face because this is where you get to manipulate your face structure and give yourself the face that you want, or to a degree at least. Now, it depends on the look you're going for. If you're going for kind of passability, you will need to turn the contouring down a bit, otherwise you will look very obvious like you've got lots of brown on your face. But if you're doing something like drag, like I'm doing right now, you can get away with using a lot and it looking okay because mainly this look, up close, you can tell I've got a lot of fucking makeup on. But from a distance, this is kind of a theatrical thing and it looks... It's all a game of proportions, basically. And if we're trying to create feminine proportions, we want things like bigger eyes and the rest of our features to be small. And if you're someone who is a sign male at birth, you tend to have testosterone, which means you then have stronger muscles, stronger bone structure, which will then mean that you 
have a face that is considered manly and proportion wise this means your eyes are not the biggest focal point of your face because everything else is bigger. You'll have things like a big jaw or a big chin, not very big lips, not very big cheeks and a big forehead. So what we do is we counteract all of this with contour. So I'll go step by step in how you do that. Obviously first, the thing to consider is your face shape. A lot of people have different face shapes. We want to create the ideal face shape, which is like a, basically a round face, because we don't want to look square, which a lot of us do look square. Square can be cool. I personally like looking like a square faced lady, kind of like Angelina Jolie or something. But I also want to add more roundness to my face because I don't like how angular and square my face looks from a glance. So, the most important thing I find for me is like the chin and the jaw because talking about passability, I feel like you want a smaller chin. So one way you would do that is you use a dark colour on the edges of your chin and what this does is it makes the edges of your chin whittle down and it makes them look like they're coming back and it just softens the shape of your chin. If you will then complement this with a highlight colour right on the tip of your chin that makes your chin look pointier and smaller and you can play with where you put this highlight. If you put it low, it makes your chin look lower. But if you put the dot, say, higher, it makes the point of your chin look like it's higher, which makes your chin generally look smaller from a glance. You do this with the nose as well. This is very common for people do with the nose, is you draw two brown stripes down the side of it, blend them out, and then put a white stripe down the middle of it. You don't do it the size of your actual nose brick, you do it the size of a smaller nose brick, so you draw a smaller nose on. To be honest, this is probably just because our society likes people to have small, thin noses, but I feel like the reason this is very popular in drag is because also this can possibly add to a feminine face. Not to say feminine faces can't have big noses, because I actually think bigger noses can look really nice, but I feel like it's all a game of proportions, and if you give yourself a small chin, small jaw, small nose, it makes things like your eyes and lips look bigger which, in the grand scheme of things, is how we perceive feminine face to be. More about eyes and lips as focal points, especially the eyes. So that's why we make the nose smaller. And I guess people just like a small nose. I already have a small nose, so I just like to play with what I've got. One more thing is the cheeks. I find a very feminine thing is to have the widest point of your face be the cheeks. So if you're a person with, say, a love heart face shape, or a diamond face shape, or like an upside down triangle, then or like an upside down house maybe, then that's that's kind of the face you want, but if you don't have that, that's the face you want to create. So the best way to do that is you use this light colour to make your cheeks look like you're coming forward, but if you put this all the way on the outside of your cheek, it makes the whole cheek look like it's coming forward and it kind of just makes your cheeks look wider. Another thing to do while well you're considering this is to angle it slightly upwards. This way it makes you look more uplifted, which everyone likes to look like they've had a facelift. One thing you do want to consider with almost everything you do, whether it's cheeks, forehead, um, cheekbones, eyes, imagine you just have your face and then tilt it 45 degrees upwards, everything just comes up and snatched. And then once you've done your whole makeup like this, you will look more catty, I guess. Another thing is the jaw. Again, I have a square jaw, so I want to make this, these corners look like they go further back, so then my jaw looks softer. So you can see I have very dark jaw contour here right now because I'm going for a drag look. But you can almost see I drew on like a new jawline, and then this makes just my face look more feminine. Other places you could contour is underneath the lips. You can imagine the fold under your bottom lip. I personally like to give myself bigger lips, so how you would give yourself a bigger lip to overdraw your lips. But you can also contour around your lips, so if you draw on that fold underneath your lips, make it darker or bigger, it makes your bottom lip look like it's casting more of a shadow from hanging lower down. People also do this with the eyes, you contour a bigger eye crease on or make your eyes just look more prominent. But I'll get into that when I talk about the eyes, which is going to be in episode 3. So highlighting is the opposite of contouring, we already know that. So where you would highlight, I've already talked about the tip of the chin, above the mouth, the cheeks. Maybe some people contour like above their jaw under their cheekbone, but that's just a compliment, the cheek contour. You could do the middle of your forehead and your brow bone. I find one feature that a lot of, that's pretty interesting and considered desirable is this dip of the nose, you can kind of picture it, it's in between the eyebrows, a lot of people highlight that. I think it's because it can make you look masculine if you have a, this bit that dips in, because then it makes your brow bone look like it's hanging forward, which is considered very masculine. So if you highlight in between your eyebrows, it can even out your face. Another thing to consider with highlighting, this is more so for drag, if you want a really light colour, like say for example me and my really light cheeks that I like, you want to put it on before you put on the base, not to cover it with the base say, 
But imagine you put a cream base on, which is like your mid-tone colour, your skin colour, your flesh colour, and then you put, say, a white on top, like I use a white. The white is only going to mix with that skin colour that's underneath and then for become a more subdued white. I would use the white or the light highlight colour first, and that way, if there's no product underneath it, it won't mix with anything, and that way it stays, it retains its colour and its vibrancy. That's only if you're going to do the method where you paint all the colours on at once, which I like to do. I paint my light colours on, then I paint my dark colours on, and then I paint my mid-tones in between those and I blend it all together, rather than doing a step-by-step -step base where it all mixes with the contour colour underneath, and it also becomes a waste of product. It also saves you a lot of time, I'd say it saves like an hour out of my makeup routine. So then once you've done contouring and highlighting, you will reinforce this with powder. So first you would set your whole face with powder because you're going to be covering loads of creams and stuff. Now you've already got the theory of contouring and highlighting down, so basically, now that you've done that, do it all again with powder. Some people don't do this, especially if you do a stronger contour and highlight, then you would use powder to kind of subdue it all, to kind of merge it all together and turn it down, so you, you might just leave it like that. But basically, yeah, you want to take a powder version of the creams, and so you will want a light powder, and put that over everywhere your highlight was, and you will want a dark powder, like a bronzer, a bronzing powder, or a contour powder, if, again, same colours, and you put that everywhere the contour was. I find that creams are good to work with because creams, you can like, go over them, correct them, draw over them and stuff, whereas powder is more refined, but powder is easy to like, blend out and do subtly. It's kind of a matter of preference, you try both, you see what you want, but I do both, I do cream, then powder. And then once you've set all the face with powder, your base is done, and then you're ready to move on to things like eyes and lips and details and all that fun stuff. Oh, also, one more thing. Contouring is also used to create things like boobs, like these. You can use that to manipulate where the light's going to be, and you can create like fake, like cleavage. People can also do things like contour their neck, contour away their Adam's apple, contour their collarbones, and you know, you can do it pretty much all over your body, but to be honest, it mostly matters on the face. So yeah, once the base is done, once you've set that with a mixture of either translucent powders, contours, and highlight powders, you will then go into highlighting, which is strobing. Not to be talking about highlight as in the opposite of contour, but highlighting these days now describes what was or is known as strobing, which is where you use a wet, dewy looking product to make your skin look shinier, but you strategically place this so areas of your face catch the light. You obviously just spent all of this time creating a new face structure, so you don't want to just go putting highlights all over your face because the whole point of this is we're talking about where light catches the face, and we're drawing these shadows and lights on to make it look like the light is catching our face in a way that we want our face to be perceived. If you put a dewy product all over your face, that's just going to show the actual structure of your face and it's not going to look as flattering when you've got all this makeup on. So what you do is you put this in a strategic places. So, for example, you put it on the apples of your cheeks like I have and then it means when you smile and stuff, the apples of your cheeks catch the light and it just makes your cheeks look fuller and happier and more feminine and youthful. A lot of people like to put highlights on the tip of their cheekbone here, which this just makes your cheek look like bonier, which I guess is fine because then you're not contouring and it doesn't make you look too bony or like aged or anything. It just makes it look like you've got a good cheekbone. So I much prefer this to say contouring. And in fact, this has become a trend that some people call non-touring, which is basically you use highlights to suggest where in your face is coming out, rather than contour to suggest where it's going in. But if you're really good at making up, you use all these. So what would you use to highlight? You would use a strobing or highlighting product. So a lot of the time people use them shimmery powders you can get, but there is also liquid highlighters out there which look a lot more like realistic. I use a mixture because I really like a bright glow, especially because I'm so pale. Okay, and that's it for the base. That's it for highlighting and tom contouring. So that, this part of the face is done. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you're ready for the next episode where I'm going to be talking about eyes. If you like this show, let me know what you're thinking. If you don't like the show, let me know what you're thinking. And I have a lot of other videos, so please check all of them out. And also let me know what you think of this look. Thank you for watching, this has been Drag101, and I've been Ava.